What? It only goes live on vertical now. Look at this, YouTube. Holy smokes, Crusher Crew. Carl Crusher here. I'm up at Mount Wilson Ranch. This is the haunted shaman room. I'm going to be staying and sleeping in this room the entire trip up here. And the intentions of this trip today is to go to um, the saloon tonight. And Jeff and I, we're going to be live over in the saloon at Mount Wilson Ranch setting up the modular unidentified phenomena alert system that I've been talking about that was created and built by former um, Skinwalker Ranch scientist um, and physicist Jim Sagala. So I've been working with Jim Sagala on this entire project over on my Patreon page. And the whole point of it is to expand the project up here to Mount Wilson Ranch so we can bring scientific sensors and equipment to these locations to actually gather data and proof of the paranormal. So that's the whole point. We're gonna be setting up this device over in the shaman room, or the, this is the shaman room that we're in right now. We're gonna be going over to the saloon and setting this up in there uh, with Jeff. So that's what we're doing. I'm just looking at the chat. Hey everybody, what's up Mr. Cuba? What's up Dallas Dixon? This is live. Normally when we do a premiere, it's not live, but this is live. So this is the same room that Bob Bigelow slept in where the shadow figure of the shaman apparently appeared next to him in the bed like a sleep paralysis incident. And so I'm gonna be staying in here this entire trip up here. And this device that was built by Jim Sagala has a gamma radiation sensor. It has um, like accelerometer, infrasound, um, a gyro, like it can tell which direction it is. It uh, also has um, pressure sensors, weather. Um, it plugs into the internet and this is gonna be available for live tracking. So the whole point is, is that people who are members of the Mount Wilson Ranch Moopos group, the Modular Unidentified Phenomena Alert System team, can log in and watch live as the data comes in on this device. So what do you guys wanna see? Do you guys wanna see around? Do you guys wanna see around the shaman room first? And then we'll go over there, put the backpack on. So here's the, here I'll turn the camera around, show you guys the shaman room. So here is the modular device that has all the sensors in it. What's up, Braxton Spaulding? What's up, Bubba? What's up, Anna? Thank you for being here. I am watching the chat, and this is live. I'm 100% live at Mount Wilson Ranch right now. I'm going to be up here most of the week. So there's all the sensors. This is the Ethernet cable that plugs in and the power cord. And then here's the shaman room. Yes, sir. What's happening? There's here, Mr. Jeff and McBurney. We're already live. Did you see that alert come in? Ooh, I did not. So there's the device. All right. You've got the laptop and everything. Yep. So here, why don't you carry all the technical stuff? We're you, going across the way? We're going across the way. I'm just going to show them, show them around the room. It's a little dark over there, but we'll make it. We'll figure it out. Yeah. So everybody says hi. Hi, Jeff. Braxton hello, hello. says, oh, hello. Joe says hi. Welcome back. Welcome back. Yeah. So should we give them any little teasers as to anything that happened from Beyond Skinwalker Season 2? Technically, we're not allowed to, right? Well, we're in a neat room right now. I mean, if we really want to get down to it. We don't know what's going to be left in or what's going to be left out. But let's just say when we came here with the History Channel and Jeff and I were out on the patio, everyone in this room started like yelling and freaking out and captured something crazy um, we don't know if, if they've been able to debunk it or what, but something <laughs> on camera. Yeah, live. <laughs> live, right? Yeah, so with everybody in here, including the producers and cameramen and sound people and everybody. So, yeah, this is the shaman room. This is the same room where Bigelow was sleeping and the shadow figure appeared. Here, I'll turn the camera around so I'm not just staring at myself. 
This is where I'm going to be sleeping. I brought all my fuzzy blankets so I don't get cold. <laughs> <laughs> and I might steal a toaster oven and a little coffee maker from another room down. No, below. we're going to make you come across to the main building. You like it over there. I do like it over there, but I'm going to sneak around and get my own too. <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, this is the shaman room though. So when I sleep in here, the experience that I have is like I will wake up and feel like this weird vibration and dropping feeling. Like, you know, when you're, when you're, uh, fall asleep in a chair or a recliner kind of tilted back and you feel like, whoa, like you're falling off a cliff and that yanks you awake. I do that like a whole bunch sleeping in this room. And then I wake up and then I feel this presence, like literally feel like you feel like there's someone standing in that corner staring at you and you look over there and it's super dark in that corner. And then you go over there and there's nothing there. Or I go over there and there's nothing, but I'm going to be staying in here and filming it and documenting it <clears throat> all for uh, the whole trip up here. We're doing a whole new series for 2024 behind the scenes for Beyond Skinwalker, and maybe even our own show, right? Okay. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. Yes, indeed. But we place our bets when we know our odds. <laughs> okay, you ready? Let's do it. Let's go to the saloon, sir. I'm gonna grab my backpack here. Okay. I'm I'm fine. Okay. I don't. I have some flashlights in my backpack, but let's just let them see what it looks like. This is the outside here. Okay, we're going on a little journey. Here, reach into my backpack on the. Oh, you've got your hands full. Hang on. We'll be there in a second, guys. Don't worry. I have a headlamp, but it'll take longer to dig it out than it is just to walk over here. So this is the lodge and the saloon. I know that you can't see it right now, but we're going down the hallway here into the main building. This is what it looks like to us too. So welcome to the club. Hey, Canada. Hey, Bella B. Well, I really can't see anything. <laughs> so oh, there we go into the lodge hey babs what's up bella bella b so here we are in the lodge if you watch the intro video to all of the mount wilson ranch videos the intro clip you'll see the photograph of bigelow and colm kelleher standing right there in front of that fireplace right there sorry it's not lit Oh no, it's great. This is really cool. This is, uh, that's the diner in there. This is the big rock that we blasted out of the ground when History Channel was here. Hey Steven, how's it going? Can you believe they make us live stream in uh, vertical now? It forced me to flip vertical this time. That's the first time ever. This is a piece of the rock that came out of the, when we did the dynamite for Beyond Skinwalker. Uh, it like zipped right over one of the camera guy's heads and I almost hit him in the face. It was a pretty, pretty crazy day. Okay, let's go look around. Here's this really cool globe up here <clears throat> that has, uh, some of you will find this interesting. What does that say? Tartaria. Can you believe that? On this old globe. Here's something else that's cool. Let me see if I can set you up. Check this out. The globe is awesome. Yes, it is, Stephen A. Yes. Look at this. Up. They'll hide all your secrets in there. Isn't that cool? Okay. Yeah, but that even says right on the globe there. 
How's it feel to be back? It feels good. Right? I felt really happy when I pulled up to the main gate today, oh, dude. I felt great. Cool. I'm excited to be here. We're going to do some cool stuff. So here we go. Here's the whole plan, guys. We're in the saloon. We're going to set up this sensor device that we have, the Mupas. Let's see, which way do we want to go here? That's good. I got to turn you around though. So this is the whole saloon. There's been tons of paranormal incidents and things that have occurred in here where people have been in the other room and heard and seen glasses like levitate and shatter into the mirror and then everybody comes running in here and there's nothing that's happened. The mirror is fine and there's nothing broken like it's something happens in an echo or another dimension. People sitting here at the bar will often look into the mirrors in the backsplash and they see ghosts and things and figures sitting at the tables up above, up here. Um, and then they get up and turn around and there's no one there. We've caught little orbs and different things and shadow figures moving up and down the halls and around the building. Lots of weird noises. We've even had like strange pieces of paper just like fall down from the ceiling and float down out of nowhere, like pages out of the phone book and weird stuff. Are so the dates on it too? Or the exact date it happened? Yeah, so it fell out of the sky up here, down and landed on the floor. And the dates on the top of the page of the phone book were the same dates that the group was here when it was found, like the day before I came up. So it's pretty crazy. Here, I'll pan around real slow. This is where we're going to be filming this whole live stream tonight. And then the whole point is, is we're going to be setting up this actual scientific device. This is the MUPAS, the Modular Unidentified Phenomena Alert System device here in the saloon. And then through the live stream channels um, and the live feed access through the Mount Wilson Ranch Patreon, people are going to be able to log in and see. So if anybody's up here and has an incident or something occurs or they witness something or if the cameras catch an orb flying around, we can actually match that up with gamma radiation, microwave radiation, infrasound, all that kind of stuff on top of this. This was built and invented by Dr. Jim Sagala, and he worked for the first several seasons on the Secret of Skinwalker Ranch TV show, worked with Travis Taylor, and he worked with, uh, directly as an intern with Hal Putoff, who was like the main scientist uh, behind all the UFO stuff, so. Yeah, let's put one more set of lights on. It looks really cool in here, but I'm afraid when I turn my camera around this way, there we go. it might be a little bit darker. There we go. Okay, we're gonna set it on like that. Okay. Turn this around here. Okay, sorry guys. I'm just getting you guys situated on the tripod so we can see what we're doing down the end of the bar here. Okay, so you can kind of see yourself on there. Might need to move that chair. Okay. How about we gonna use the star one or you wanna use the other? Uh... Yeah, whatever. I think that would be great. Right here's great. Let me adjust this camera a little bit now that I see where we're at. Everybody's all angled funny. Carl, am I nervous? No, I love coming up here. Um, I feel better when I come up here. When I get away from here, I feel like I'm off track. I feel like I'm not making progress in what I'm... So I feel like a lot of what I've been doing over the last several years has led me here. And even my work with Roger and Colleen with the, right there, Reindigenizing Minds Project. Hi, Roger, we're live right now. Uh, a lot of them, working with them has validated me coming up here because I felt like I've been like on a migration 
going to ancient petroglyph sites, having these dreams and stuff like there's these tunnels underground and something I'm supposed to find underground. And all of that has led to here, <laughs> where the government's been up here researching for decades, looking in tunnel systems underground for a buried system. The book, you've got them right there, Jeff. Did you just grab that? Show them the book while I get this going here. You can talk to Jacques Vallée, Forbidden Science. Just look right there and they're talking to you. There's their comments. There you go. I can't see that. <laughs> you, you don't have your eyes on. <laughs> anyway, here we are. There's Jacques Vallée, Tim Ryan, hanging out in front of the room Carl's staying in tonight. Yeah, they're all out in the driveway right there in the parking lot and the patents and all of that. So Hal put off in the photo right here and all talked about. Um, Jim Sagala is the physicist that was the intern working with him that built this device that's helping us now on the team. Can, How, coming around full circle, full right? Full circle, dude, yeah. it's so cool. So that was his right hand man. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah, and Jacques Vallée and Dr. Tim Ryan, there was millions of dollars in government patents and research that went into what was buried under Mount Wilson. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. It might be a little bit hard. Let's see, I was led to Mount Wilson for a reason and I will find out what I'm looking for. I know what we're looking for. We're gonna look for metamaterial. It doesn't matter what Congress says. It doesn't matter what they say in the error report. We know that this stuff is, an ex is not extraterrestrial. We know it's not extraterrestrial. All the evidence says that this, what they really have and what they really got was recovered interdimensionally from ancient artifacts that were found underground. And the one place that we find that happening is here at Mount Wilson Ranch where all this weird stuff goes on. So, I don't know. I think it's still there. <laughs> Apparently it is. It talks to us, yeah, Jeff. We've, we've heard it. I mean, <laughs> it talks to us. Yeah. It, it talks to us and we're gonna listen with this and many other devices because we're gonna put one in here in the saloon, one in the shaman room, one down in the uh, settler's cabin and we can move these around because once we get it set up and reprogrammed repro in for up here on this Wi-Fi, we can technically unplug this and move it around and it will just reconnect in with the Starlink and we can capture data anywhere that we want from the ranch. So, okay. So let's see, we gotta go ahead and log in here. And then we're gonna have to plug this in. Do you have like a power strip over there to plug into? That'll be interesting, but we can do anything. I have one that I, Brought like a splitter out in my truck too. And that's gonna be for our wife. Uh, yeah, we're definitely gonna need it. Need a little yeah. splitter. So there's the device. So what will happen is uh, here. I'll turn. I'll come and talk to you guys for a minute while we figure the cables out. Interdimensional. Yeah, they say that it's. They're all saying there's no evidence that it's extraterrestrials doing a secret program and there's a small little group of people involved in telling the same stories about UFOs. It's like, yeah, that same small group of people were all up here for over a decade with way more than $20 million. They were all getting uh, government funding from DARPA, the Army, the Navy. Uh, they all worked for the Defense Intelligence Agency. Half of them were members of the, the beginnings of the Psychic Spy Program out of Stanford Research Institute. And they had millions of dollars going into tunneling and digging into whatever was underground down here, all at the same time that the flakes of metamaterial showed up in Las Vegas that all of this is supposed to be about. So even though they're saying, oh, it's not extraterrestrial, yeah, it's not metal spacecraft craft from Venus or whatever, that Jacques Vallée and none of those guys have ever even said that. So he's not even saying anything when he said that in the Arrow Report. It's just a waste of time. And we've been saying from the beginning, if you're waiting for the government to give you answers when it comes to this stuff, you're, don't hold your breath. That's why we go up here, boots on the ground, using dynamite, using tractors, 
hiring the scientists that used to work for Bigelow and his people now work for, with us and our, our colleagues and we do this our own way and we don't wait for anybody to give us permission, right? Yeah, we can dig. Right? Yeah. That's my Carl for I like it. president speech, yeah. right? And that's why I have a flag in the saloon. <laughs> okay, we're, we're in, sir. We are... Uh... What do you, you want to plug into we here can, or here? Doesn't matter, right into there is great. Let's plug right into the router. If that's a line out. Okay, I'm gonna flip you guys back around here so I can see where we're at. Okay. I would tell you to keep an eye on the comment section, but you can't see shit. <laughs> I told you I've been exposed too much. Well, tell, okay, so tell them what you've been experienced experiencing when you've been sleeping at night up here? Um, again, you can't determine whether you hear it or feel it. Some type of uh, sound, frequency, something. It's like a vibration, right? Ah, it's uh, undetermined, I don't know. Yeah. You know, again, like a vibration, but you can kind of hear it. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm unsure exactly what it is, but long-term exposure, um, I believe my eyesight is being affected by it. And like I said, yes, it's difficult to read the fine print there. Okay. I need to get to the Experiencer website here, so. Normally, I would use my phone to look that up, but you guys are on my phone now. <laughs> so let me see here if I can remember it. Need this phone? I gotta go see if you can. Um... No, it's okay. I think I need to just figure out Mupas, Jim, Sagala. I just need to find the right website on here. So here's what I'm doing. Oh, well, here's what you I'm can gonna, do. I'm gonna, all right. No, you're good. Stay here. Yep. So on your phone, get off of the Starlink and the Wi-Fi here, and you can step in right up under the camera here. Okay. So just lean right over to the camera gotcha. here with this. Right, can you see yourself? It. It's a little bit, a little I bit out see of myself. sight. There. there I am. There we go. All right. Okay, so right. what we're gonna do is, this right now is trying to find my Wi-Fi at my house so that it can live feed the data from my bedroom. Because I've been having the same weird pulsing vibration thing going on ever since I started going to these places. And this device has been catching it. So you can see it's already powered on. It's already trying to transmit. And if you look into your, go into your Wi-Fi settings on your phone. Go for it. So we swipe down here and we go into the Wi-Fi. And this actually pulls up an extra option. So you have, there it says MUPAS is the middle one, M-U-P-A-S. That's the Modular Unidentified Phenomena Alert System. So now we're going to switch over. So the MUPAS, what was the Wi-Fi? Oh, no. No, it's okay. Uh... Ah... Uh, uh, yes. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Share password. Thank you, Apple. Wow. Yeah, we're in. <laughs> okay. It what? did it. Okay, so the my iPhone saved the day. <laughs> okay, so we're in now. Okay, so now we're on. This is transmitting a Wi-Fi signal now. Okay. To the phone. So now that your phone is on that. And now I go to, oh goodness, where's your internet here? Safari, I gotta go to, come on. This is interesting doing this live, huh? Yeah, it's all you good. You are good, I'm telling you. So now what we're gonna do is we're, we're on the Mupas Wi-Fi. And we're gonna go, okay, there's a specific, 
there's a specific code that I'm gonna have to get off of off of my phone that I would have to end the wi the live stream to get. So basically, what we would do at this point is log this on and get this registered into the Starlink satellite internet here, and then literally tomorrow, anybody that's a member of the uh, Patreon page could log in with the code and with that URL and access the live feed of all the gamma radiation, the microwave radiation, accelerometer, gyroscope, the sound, infrasound pressure, the weather, literally everything. Even if somebody moves it, it catches it. Awesome. And so, yeah, if you're like having that vibration sensation or that weird, weird dreams or if knickknacks having anything go on, um, huh. this will catch it. It's strong lately too, man. Yeah. It, it is strong. So after we get off the live tonight, um, on camera, what I'll do, I should have wrote it all down on paper before, but I was like, oh, I was up here, we got hanging out. I was like, we better go live. So, but anyway, we'll get this all hooked up and it's gonna go through a live feed and then there's also gonna be updates and video logs. So the plan is when anybody comes and stays up here, we can move this over to the room that you're staying in or the room that I'm in and we can film the entire correlative experience so that like if I have that whole phenomena occur where it feels like I'm gonna fall through the bed, I can get up in the morning and it's not just a story where everybody has to take my word for it. We can get on and see if the Mupas device actually captured evidence of that because if at that same moment that I'm experiencing that sleep paralysis type phenomena in the shaman room, if this catches a giant wave of gamma radiation, there's no way that I did that. There's no way that that's something that I produced that the device caught. That's something here at the property or geologically or some form of gamma radiation entering the room and creating that experience or interfacing and having uh, triggering that experience as part of it. And so the whole point is to get several of these, including the bigger systems that we'll put out in the meadow right on top of where the UFO is supposed to be buried. And the whole point is that we're gonna live track the sky and everything. And even with the infrasound, anything even the size of like a baseball that comes into the atmosphere, keep in mind we're near Area 51, so we're gonna catch all that stuff too. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> but that, that should be easy. That might be interesting. Yeah. But anything like even from Area 51 or anomalous coming and going or even in and out of the mountain or all, according to all those stories, um, the Skywatch system will be able to capture that. And then if it moves across the ranch, the ones in the buildings, like the saloon device, the, ro the oh, room device, crazy. and then the Skywatch devices, that data will track it and you'll even see which way it went. You can see that it went north to south or west, east to west or whatever, and even how, if it came in the building or whatever. So we'll be able to track all of that. So is this thing exterior? applicable or is it all interior that one it can kind of go outside but that these are meant for indoors okay. there are outdoor systems that are on hold tripods and we hard hardwire those ones all the way in okay so while i'm here i'm gonna i'm up close now and i can look at your comments so what we'll do is i'm going to give you guys a tour of this whole main building up here and then i've got other devices like thermal and some of that in my backpack we can go through and we could just do like an ask me anything about the history of this place. We can get into some of the artifacts down the hallway, see maybe there might even be some metamaterials laying out there in the hallway. That's the other thing I wanted to tell you. So while I'm up here, Jeff, um, as soon as I get up tomorrow, I want to, I'm gonna 3D scan this entire saloon. So like for virtual reality, everybody will be able to go online like onto my patreon and access that group and get the link to go online and you can zoom around just like you're here like virtual reality so i'm going to scan this whole place and the settler's cabin down below and everything you love this place steven hey what's up jamie jammy how much is the tour what's up thank you crazy scott for the five dollars appreciate that Thank you, Jessica. This is awesome, she says. I need to install a couple of seismographs. So this has that in there. 
if, if with this is plugged in and going, even if somebody just sits here and touches the counter next to it just softly like this, it will catch it. It catches all of that. If there's any in, shifts in any kind of energy or atmospheric pressure or vibration, even if someone walks in and out of the room, this can catch it. So even the Skywatch cameras, when we put them down in the meadow, that pulsing signal that we get, that ultra low frequency, it'll be able to live feed all of that. If it turns on and off or gets stronger or dips or whatever, if it turns into like a form of communication, we're going to get all of that. Yeah. How about in the ground? Yeah, so the bigger Skywatch systems, it will, it will detect that too. It's actually on a tripod that goes out into the ground on outside. And so anything in the sky, if there's an earthquake or vibration, even if they do underground like nuclear testing at the Nevada test site, it will probably catch all of that. Yeah. Temperature too, Joe. Yes, sir. Does all the temperature and the weather, cold, all of that stuff. It, I couldn't even figure out. I was like, oh, maybe this is it. Maybe this is it. And I realized it was actually catching when my, when my heater, my furnace was turning on and off in the garage. Thank you, Aaron. Appreciate that. You guys want to see around the place? Here, I'll show you guys around the main area. It look, oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Erin says she's grateful to be a part of this. I appreciate that so much. Honestly, everybody that's a part of this is could really be a part of history because we've got exclusive permission to be able to do all the behind the scenes on this. I'll just say this much. I, we can't say a whole lot. And the reason that we can't say a whole lot is because we've signed some contracts. But in those contracts, we fought to the death almost to make sure that Jeff and I are allowed to keep doing this. And the fact that we're allowed to live stream and continue to show you guys what's going on here, the fact that other agencies haven't come and shut us down and that the government hasn't come and shut us down or the military hasn't come and shut us down is kind of like they're, people are letting us do stuff that normally you would not be allowed to do at this point. And so we're super excited about like what we consider like true disclosure of what's going on here. Thank you, Steven. So let me show you around. Yeah, we got the whole saloon. Man, I'm making some good speeches tonight, Jeff. You hear that monologue? Whew, it's the truth though. <laughs> it is the truth. Hello. I am reading all of your comments, even though I've got the camera pointed away. So this is the Craw Creek Saloon. <clears throat> this is where on the one motion tracking device, we had the entity that would like come out of this room and stand in the bar and go back in and out. Bella Bay says, how many people do we have helping? Well, on my Patreon, I have groups of people. And then over on the Mount Wilson Patreon, there's, there's others. So if you want to be a part of the Mount Wilson research team, you can go there and be a part of that for, I think it's $20 a month to access all the data. As much as it expands, even out to the Skywatch cameras, that $20 a month will get you all the part of that study and that team. If you donate towards the devices over there, I'm not trying to make this a sales pitch. I'm just explaining it to you. Oh, hey, another donation. Thank you, Jessica. So awesome contributing to the cause. Thank you. Yeah, Jeff and I have like a partnership going now where we're expanding and even with, with Dr. Jim Sigala, that all of this is getting split up to keep the ranch going and to expand the research so we get these devices put in. Because instead of just telling a bunch of folklore and ghost stories, you should be able to log on and see the proof for yourself, you know? Yes, thank you guys for making this happen. Uh, part of the dream yeah and if you really want to help the ranch like nowhere else ever like honestly if you try to go anywhere else like i love skinwalker ranch i love all the other places where they're trying to do this research if you go anywhere else they're going to lock the gates and point guns at you and tell you to get out but if you want to actually be a part of the research that's the other thing you can do on the patreon pages is go um, look for it and plan a trip out with some of your friends and you can come get day passes and 
have us come up here and run around and be a part of it. And all of that goes towards getting more devices and keeping the ranch going and this whole project, you know? And we talk about that, like how do we do this open so everybody can see what's going on? Yeah, James. James wants to come up and see ya, Jeff. Come on up. How about installing IR cameras with live feeds? Yes, we just talked about over at your house getting the Nest cams, the infrared cameras. So we can expand and do that too and put donation packages together for the um, cameras and everything. I almost brought these Nest cameras up here and everything. But again, it's like a paid subscription to be have the Nest camera and then we got to upgrade all the internet so it's not lagging all the time. But even having catch this- more to shadow figures. Catch I mean, all, all the all stuff, yeah. yeah. Instead of just getting dust particles and people telling stories and having weird dreams, like we should be able to line up the data. There should be some kind of scientific data. Yeah, get the place wired up. That's the whole point. And do it all independently too. So it's not controlled by a network, not controlled by a government agency or anything like that. Um, it's you know, funded by everybody who wants to be a part of it and people who come up here and visit the ranch. Yes, thanks, Crazy Scott, appreciate it. Yeah, Steven, get the place wired up. Hey, Rockstar. Yeah, so we've got photos of Bigelow here. Let me show you guys this fireplace up close and how cool this is. So this is all made out of rock that's come out of the local mines. And notice how there's, there's all these wine bottles and mining cores. And I've even brought my Geiger counter in and these have a radiation coming off of them. <laughs> Those mining cores, do you, you take the Geiger counter and it goes <laughs> and goes up and up. Like, and the ones down here on the ground, too, have, like, radiation decay coming off heavy. Like, you think the old pioneers, they keep it warm in the wintertime, even when the fire's not going. This fireplace was on duty this winter. Yeah. It definitely kept this place warm. It's awesome. Yeah, I see all of this. I'll show you some more details. The bottles coming out of the rock. There's a drill, drill head that they put in there. So who would have had the money to put all these fancy things in during this time period, Jeff, that was rumored to be up here? Howard Hughes. Howard Hughes. Howard Hughes. Dick Williams was his good friend, did all his mason demolition work. What? He built this building. This is all built out of masonry. Yes. Solid walls, rebarred. Board. Let's show you the lights out here in the hallway. You're Let's show them out here. You guys are saying, wow, that drill head, LOL. You talk about drill heads. Wait till you get a load of everything out in the hallway here. Okay, I'm going to take you guys off the tripod and go by hand here. All right, so I can get in closer. So this is all stuff that you've found up and around here. Let's just go this way. The museum. The museum. What is all this stuff? These are tobacco cans yep. from the old miners. Yep. Now just think about the TV show Curse of Oak Island and how they freak out when they find one little nail or one little piece of tin or whatever. And then just look at what Jeff's got in the hallway here. Look at all the stuff that he's found. Right? Evidence of digging underground going to clear back into the this chain 1800s. Up from where the roadbed is. Yeah, that old chain. That comes from what could be an old Spanish cart path or miner's path that goes to a road to nowhere. Except some of the locals have said, if you go over there, be careful. You better be careful going over there. Like it's some kind of cursed canyon or something. <laughs> So that's on our list of things to do this year is to go over the cursed canyon over there. But I don't know. But Jeff, what are some other stuff you found over there by that cart pass? That chain? 
Let's see. Oh, right here. What else? Pipe wrench. The old pipe wrench. Oh, yeah, the big old pipe wrench. Mm. Right here under the red box, I think. Yes. This was just laying on the side of the mountain up there for no... No, in it. Like, in a... Like a what? Yeah, this was the only thing showing. It was buried in yeah. the mountain. Yep. Whoa. Along with a pickaxe. Like, is this some, like, Tartarian tool or what the hell is this thing, dude? Like, where did the... Why is this buried in the side of the mountain out here, man? There's, like, nothing else up there. There's just, like, an old, 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 old stone, hand stone placed road. That's a weird one, man. It doesn't even make sense how that works. How about, do you remember the story of this thing? That safe? Yeah. Where, that was down in the room, down in the oh, army right. army barracks, yes. right? Yep. You in found that house. in the floor of the bunkhouse. That so that's another night. question. How, when were those army barracks brought in and who would have had the money to bring in army barracks? We're thinking it all relates around Howard the Hughes. runway. The runway and Howard Hughes, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, just as well as the fire station, which you know used to be like a workshop slash yes. something that they could attend something. But this was in the ground in there. Mystery safe was in the floor. Jeff pickaxed it out like you could see. Jack hammered Jack hammered One of the best nights ever. <laughs> Is it open? <laughs> look, look what we did. Oh, we geez. Cut it open through the side. You did. And there was nothing in it. Nothing. Nothing. That was so exciting, too. Man. <laughs> like usual, nothing in the safe. That was a good, that was a great night, though. That was so much fun. Yes, army barracks. Like... Like they were housing people for experiments or an archaeological team or a research team, all for Howard Hughes. It just recently came out. Who, Danny Sheehan. I'm doing a conference with him for the um, Vinny's disclosure thing. So Danny Sheehan recently just set up that Howard Hughes was part of the Nixon Watergate scandal because Richard Nixon actually had contracted with Howard Hughes and his team of scientists to try and find a way to assassinate Fidel Castro without touching him or without anybody knowing it was us. And that was all the same crazy time as psychic spy, psychic spy stuff, Mount Wilson Ranch, Jacques Vallée, Jacques Vallée and everything. All this stuff. Yeah, this place is pretty cool. So this is more. Why are railroad spikes out here? Where are you getting all those? Oh, they, there used to be a railroad that went over to the Bristol's. Supplying all the mines. There was a railroad going to the Bristol mines? Yeah, yeah. Wait, wait that back. went through here? Uh, down a little south of here. A smaller gauge. We can't tell you yet what we dug out of the ground up behind Jeff's house up here. When the History Channel was here, we did a lot more digging underground. And so, anyway, interesting. <laughs> interesting yeah. that there's a bunch of rail railroad spikes on the side of the mountain up here. Look at all this. We haven't even got to the ancient indigenous stuff, the pottery. Those are all tobacco tins. Look at this one's cool. Prince Albert. Crimp something or other. That's it. Yep. That's cool. That one's kind of painted too still. Wow. Hey, Pixie. Ever see the movie about Howard Hughes back in the 90s? Yeah, wasn't that with Leonardo DiCaprio? The uh, aviator? Aviator? Yeah, it's funny how they make movies about all these people to kind of control the story they want you to hear about them, right? They don't tell you what they were really doing. Oh, yeah, look at that. 
Here we can just pull it down here too. This is a gourd of pottery. So this is all stuff that's been found around the acreage of Mount Wilson. This is all very old basket maker culture, Fremont people culture, Anasazi. This would be Paiute, a lot of it. See, this stuff has got some white calcite clay in it. Yeah, so there's been Native American people here for thousands of years too. In fact, the uh, legends of the shaman and all that and the stone circles and a lot of these artifacts that we find around here relate to Wavoka and the ghost dance ritual. So the, the Paiute tribe that was here, they would put these stone circles on the ground and do dances around them clockwise in conjunction with the rotation of the Big Dipper around the North Star. It's stuff I found all over this area but it's up here at Mount Wilson Ranch and connected with this area. And that ghost dance ritual started here in Nevada and came up through this whole area. And there's evidence that Wovoka's ghost dance and the paranormal activity that occurs up here is related to some of that. These appearances of this Native American that shows up. Because the ghost dance ritual was all about uh, doing the stone circle, dancing around it. And then the shaman in the center of the circle was time traveling into the future to try and deliver messages and to stop the destruction of the world. So pretty fascinating stuff. Are they reaching forward through time into our dreams and these experiences and guiding us all up here to try and find what's underground? I don't know. That goes along with exactly what the experiencers that have actually met up with him and explained to me what he says. Some, some people are told to come to here and some people are told to get out. Yeah, yep. oh yeah. Yeah, like Bigelow was told to get out and other people have basically been guided to come. Well, like me. And yeah. Nick Knack, we, we belong here. Right. I, I've been having these experiences and dreams about the man in the hat since I was a kid <laughs> until Roger told me who it was. <laughs> tell him who it is, Roger. You tell him if you're still here. It was, he says it's Wovoka, who's telling me I got to come here and tell a story. Yeah, that sounds perfect. <laughs> the perfect guy for I don't know. Yeah. It's weird, man. But yeah, Howard Hughes, the connection to Crowley and yeah, through the psychic spy programs that was going on with Andrea Puharich, Michael Persinger, Hal Putoff and all those guys. There's even evidence that Howard Hughes could literally be Bob Bigelow's dad. If you put pictures of them side by side at the same age, they look like twins. They look like father, son. Where did Bigelow get all of his money actually from? It was like he was in college, totally poor, and then he turned 21 and all of a sudden, boom, he's like into real estate, aerospace, private projects like he inherited as his dad's life. Hanging out with presidents. He all of a sudden got visitors from the men in black that said, you want to know who your real dad is? You know, that's what it seems like. Your, my son has seen the hat man since he was a little boy. Welcome to the club. Me too. Yeah, the hat man's a thing. Um, if you go look at pictures of uh, the shaman Wovoka who did the ghost dance, pay attention to where you live. Yeah, when the ghost dance went underground, it was performed in secret places. That makes sense. And if the ghost dance was real and effective... How do we know it couldn't arc up through time and visit us in our dreams and stuff? Yeah. So here's a little teaser from season two of Beyond Skinwalker Ranch. History Channel. Shout out to Bomber Jack. Bomber Jack. There, and you talk about a drill head. Look at that one. Compared to the one that was in the side of the fireplace in there. This is a little bit of an upgrade. So that's just one, a little teaser. That was uh, that was dropped and left and abandoned here. <laughs> we'll just say that. <laughs> just keep it. <laughs> this is just keep it. We don't want to take any of that back home with us. <laughs> yeah. So here's the diner, and these are all the books here that show a lot of the patents and stuff. 
These electric spacecraft journals include a lot of the, uh, here we go. Oh man, these, have you, you've been going through oh, these, yeah. haven't you? <laughs> you sit out here and dr drink your coffee and go through these in the morning. Holy smokes, Jeff. It's amazing, actually. Wow. So these are like scientific journals. Wow. This was like Wow, that this almost that almost triggered me seeing that. Oh, the op I know what you're even saying right off the you know. Whoa. That's like some esoteric stuff going on right there. Anyway, all the guys and the scientists that were up here that are part of the behind the scenes UFO research program were all part of this little secret club of nerds <laughs> that was writing their research into these journals and publishing them in the electric spacecraft journal with real world prototypes of what they were doing, developing the technology. And it's, if you want to see like, oh, here it is, the reverse engineering program of what they were doing as part of the uh, program. Look at this one right here. Experimental investigation of an electromagnetic gravitational interaction by Timothy Ryan, page 15. Timothy Ryan was just in that book that Jeff just showed you up here at Mount Wilson Ranch. So he's the guy with Hal Putoff and Jacques Vallée sitting out front of this building right outside the door there in that photograph in Jacques Vallée's book. He wrote this article back in 1994. And in 1996 is the year that the metamaterials showed up and they were taking pictures up here at Mount Wilson. And this is what they were doing. They had anti-gravity devices. They were literally building prototypes of experimental systems. Here's, you wanna know how to do anti-grav? There's the equations. There's what the where's there's what's probably buried under the meadow, Jeff, on top of the giant UFO underground. And once again, just think back to 90s, 94, 95, 96. We all thought that this was hokey pokey. Yeah, this you, was the hokey pokey. science fiction. This was Star Trek. Yeah. No, it's real. They actually built the shit. Look at it. That's the real thing. Yeah. They had the, they. This is the data. Their patents were forming and formulated and being completed. So when they say, oh, well, the UFO whistleblower hearings and stuff was just a little group of people that were circulating fake stories and nothing really came of it. What do you, how do, look at all this. These books are full of the evidence that they were actually getting funding and building real prototypes. Look, there's a picture of one. Experimental system, EMG source enclosed in the back. Yeah, so... Why would anti-gravity physicists and scientists be up here at a wild west ranch at Pioch with a bunch of UFO nerds with millions of dollars digging in tunnels underground? I don't know. The same year. Okay, so what the metamaterial? 96. Okay, so here's the thing. I've been to Skinwalker Ranch headquarters. I was in Homestead 1. Headquarters one in the headquarters office in the laboratory, Eric Bards. They're where the microscope is. The one part of my footage that I filmed in the headquarters at Skinwalker Ranch that I was told I'm not allowed to share with anybody was because I took pictures and I filmed and I picked up and held what they have as metamaterials. Okay, so I know what it looks like. When David Grush and, and Hal Putoff and these guys, Kit Green, Gary Nolan, when they describe what the metamaterials is, looks like and what how it feels like frog skin, yeah, I've felt it. I've filmed it. I've taken pictures of it. I know what it looks like. So on top of this expedition up here and this whole research trip where we're going to be 3D scanning this entire place to get it into virtual reality, we're looking for the metamaterial. I think they got... A lot of it here. The stuff that's all behind this congressional hearing and the stuff that's supposed to have like frog skin and display some form of like consciousness interaction could totally, uh, that bismuth um, 
alloy, zinc, aluminum alloy that's responsive could totally have come from here. Okay, let's go through the diner and back to the saloon. So I think we need to go on a quest also to try and find, go through all that stuff that we found and down in the Last meadow. Year. And then now we have this year. I mean, this is another melt-off for you. So yeah. you're going to get to go. I haven't been doing a lot because I've been just busy with, you know, trying to keep this place, you know, secure. Licking toads. <laughs> Roger says, yeah. <laughs> the DMT, <That> yeah. <laughs> that too, right? <laughs> That's, you're funny, Roger. <laughs> He's a goofball. <laughs> We have plans for you to come here, by the way, Roger. We just talked about it on yeah, the phone. Yeah, we're waiting for you. We just had a phone call with somebody today where your name came up, bro. So anyway, yeah, so this is the diner. This is where I've seen a weird apparition standing here in the kitchen. I walked through the room over here, just going by this way, and I saw a woman standing here at the sink with her back to me. And it was like she had an apron on, a white, frilly, doily-like apron on, standing here with her back to me. And then I stepped through in the room there, and I was like, wait, who is that? Like, and I, so I came back and looked, and there was nobody in here. It was just like a weird apparition. I'm losing connection. Okay. Yeah, I know why. It's because we're underneath this weird energy sink. Those lights. There's some weird energy that comes out of the ceiling right here. Sorry, I'm standing right under it. Probably not good for me to even stand under it for very long. What do I think about the possible connection between this place and Skinwalker Ranch? There's a direct connection. Uh, the connection is when you go onto, my, onto this YouTube channel after the live, when you go into the tab at the top, there's um, where you can see home, videos, live, and then playlists. And if you go to the one that says playlists, there's one that's just all of the Mount Wilson Ranch behind the scenes documentary series that I've been up here filming with Jeff. And so you can go check all, all through all, all of that out. And uh, what did you just ask me? You said it's lagging. Oh, the connections, yeah. And you'll see all the connections between us and Skinwalker Ranch up here because the entire Skinwalker Ranch research team, they were here before they went to Skinwalker. In fact, the same big yellow bulldozer that was in uh, um, at Skinwalker Ranch that's up there now, we have photographs of it parked down in the meadow with Bigelow and Jeff. Who did you buy this ranch from? Oh, directly from Mr. Bigelow himself. Directly from Bigelow, yes. Be right back. Do not so summon any ghosts yet. <laughs> right? Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go back out here and grab my tripod really quick. And then we can look at my backpack, see what tools I got. And we can either end this live and do another one before I leave up here. But also... We've got the whole series I'm gonna be filming and uploading over the next several weeks. Um, setting up the sensors, getting that data, seeing if there's any changes at certain locations up here since the snow has melted. And yeah, getting this MUPAS device set up and running tomorrow, 3D scanning the whole place. And then do you want to tell them what, we, what you've been finding? I don't even know if we want to give any attention to it. Which part? I mean, there's a lot of different things that we're even... The, uh, hang on, I'm getting you back on the tripod. We've been having some things go on that we don't know if it's vandalism, hooligans, or if it's something real. So uh, I worry about stuff like this. Like, let's say if someone was doing graffiti... And if we didn't know if it was just people pranking us or if it was something interesting. Um, anyway, there's been some really weird stuff happening up around the stone circles, like uh, weird tracks and bones, like skulls and stuff left around. But there's been other stuff that's been obvious, just vandalism too. So we don't know how much of it's real or not. But yeah. Track the trackers. 
Yes, we're going to record everything up here. Hi, Shelly. What's up? Shelly's one of the Patreon members. I do not think it's demonic. I think that's, I think those stories are junk. The experiences that I've had in this place have all been Native American, like time travel themed. If there are anything that have, feel like alien or extraterrestrial, it feels like something from the future or something. I don't know. But all of the interactions have to do with like shamanic Native American indigenous stuff. Same with Skinwalker Ranch and most of these places. I haven't had anything come through that's felt like some creature from the dark lagoon, demonic entity with red eyes or whatever. Although the History Channel did film something with weird red eyes in the trees when they were here. <laughs> People have been scared here and there have been animals that have died and there have been some spooky things that have happened. But... People freak out and take off, but again, maybe they just had the issue. Right. You know, they, they brought something. People definitely can get hurt and I've got a lot of experience and have friends and people that have been affected um, significantly affected going to sites like this. Uh, but if you go with the right intentions and you're respectful of the places, then usually nothing really happens. They're saying I need one of your dogs. <laughs> we have four of them. The animals are here, yes. There's four dogs here. That's another part of the behind the scenes that we're filming. Uh, that's how I started the whole video, is pulling up here and n introducing the names of all the doggos up here. Got Odie and Bigfoot and what are the Cry other? Baby. What are they? Crybaby. Crybaby and Night. Night. We kept the four males. The four females moved on and around. A few of them around the mountain, so yeah. they're all still around. This but is cool. We chose, we chose to keep the pack. How about, Everybody can go for a walk to each take a dog. That's right. So you come up here and you get to hike around with like a whole circle of like awesome dogs running ahead of you like checking everything okay i'm going to take you guys behind the bar here show you the sword so we're going to get off the tripod again so this is part of like uh the stuff that we just showed you down in the hallway all the old tin cans the mining equipment and we were saying there's this old cart path and like a stone road going up through the mountains up here that we don't know what it goes to and everything so then then how do you explain this thing look at this that was found up here again i love the show curse of oak island but have they ever found a, cool a freaking sword <laughs> in the ground no are you kidding me hold it more towards me it's like so i can like vertical Oh, oh, don't tip it upside down, no, though. You know, You're good? I, oh, geez. I rode over it with the quad. I'm freaking nervous, dude. It. So it's never been, since I've had it, released from it. There you go, like that. Yeah, hold it that way so I can come in close and they can see it all. That's perfect. Look at this. You ever seen it? Hang on. It's going to go dark. I'm going to clean the lens off here. Got a little glare. There we go. Have we opened the sword yet? Not yet. No, we have not. We are doing very special things in order to do that. We're waiting for the right moment. Carl's tried to have it open many times, but... Yeah, so yeah. let's check, check this out. So here's the handle. So this is a Knights of Pythia sword. This was an esoteric group kind of similar to the Freemasons, and they were here in Nevada. There has been a few notable Knights of Pythias, and there is rumors that one of the Knights of Pythias was a Rockefeller. And before Howard Hughes, there's a lot of evidence with Rockefellers up here. In fact, I hate even saying their name on the live stream because when I say that name and the other R name, the video gets flagged. <laughs> <laughs>
Alfred. This is like a guy holding the pillar, collapsing, SCB, right? Like you ever see that get pulled out of the dirt and curse of Oak Island? <laughs> like what the heck, dude? So how did you find this? You ran over it on your four-wheeler? Yeah. Look at this. See, normally there's the two-headed ax. Has uh, usually has the fashy sticks around it wrapped with the axe. The two sided double axe head was this two wings of the bee. This is all like esoteric symbolism of the queen, defending the queen and all that stuff. Just laying the double headed axe. Yeah, just what is that doing up on the mountain in Nevada? And usually they're associated when they're left on the hillside like this because they're left with a burial. So who would have been buried with that sword? Well, once again, once we find out, when we pull this thing out, at that right specific moment. Yeah, we're going to open the blade. We're going to do it with the right people here, with the archaeologists and with the right cameras the right time and we've been waiting a long time jeff's been waiting a long time because when we open the sword there could be a name on the blade that will tell us a lot if there's a name on the blade everything says it, it has to be inscribed with something so yeah because if this was definitely a ceremonial it belonged to someone would have had a name on the blade and then we'll know who it belonged to if it's a rockefeller that'd be dude that'd be, oh, that would be. that'd be wild right that would that would answer why we had a, a visitor right yeah so you had a rockefeller show up david rockefeller yeah yep. yeah tell a story just um david rockefeller contacted me by email you know I, again i didn't know if it was a real rockefeller um a year later he contacted me again said he happened to be like three hours from the place he came by, strangest stop by ever, he was here for a day and a half, and just left. Nothing. He came to see the portal, though. That was the interesting part. Yeah, and his girlfriend was legit like an alien, right? Oh, I mean, again, if you, if you listen to what we've been told or how we've been educated, what a telltale alien is, she was <laughs> it. <laughs> she was crazy. That was that was an interesting experience. Not one picture, nothing, no documentation other than just his email before he got here. That's crazy. Yeah, strange moment. Yeah, so Rockefeller showed up with his girlfriend and asked Jeff to see the portal. Take him to the portal. That's and Jeff was like, What portal? I don't know what you're talking about. What portal? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just well, repeating it. Some people couldn't no, hear you a little Mr. bit. Mr. Bigelow had told me about the portal. And so Mr. Bigelow told you. This that. just added to, like, what portal? Come on now. I mean, you know, several years later, we're on the 17 years and going right now. So, yes. There's been a lot of interesting things over the years. Hi, Colleen. Colleen Gorman's here. She's also part of the Reindigenizing Minds Project. Yes, we just did a phone call and your name came up today, too. By the way. <laughs> Wink, wink, wink. Right? Have a, has there ever been any missing people reported around the area? Oh, definitely. Yep. People just, uh, they go missing out in the woods here. A lot of parties go out searching, never to be found. Tell them about the, uh, so there's another phenomenon that happens here now because we're close to Area 51 but there's a lot of people who go underground exploring like the abandoned mines and tunnels. And what have, what have they told you? Sorry for whipping the camera oh, around us. Oh. Yeah. Are we talking about who they meet up with? Yeah, like they, they go in the ground in the tunnels and... Uh, military personnel. Yeah. Deep within the earth. So they go down in there like they're looking for crystals and gold. And then way down in there in these mine shafts that are supposed to be empty, around the corner comes soldiers with guns and tells them to get out. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, what's, Shelly says, what's underneath this place exactly? 
whatever's underneath here and why we have that modular sensor device that we've brought up here today and why we're expanding the project to do more with that is because we know there's something underground here. We just don't know when it was put here and what it's doing. We know that because when you sleep here or you come and visit, you can feel it like a pulsing sensation at night, like it's coming up through your body. It makes you dream weird stuff and have experiences. And you could feel it here because there's, it's absolutely silent up here. The sky is as black, as dark as it gets. There's no pollution from anything. Yeah. So you can connect directly to the earth. Right. Whatever is under the earth definitely vibrates, hums, or resonates. Yes. At some... Ultra level, low, ultra low frequency, pulse. subsonic level. And yeah. it's pulsing at that ultra low frequency. Sometimes more than others. Uh, Sometimes not at all. Yes. Uh, but, you know, when, when they're working, you can tell. And when we bring other people up here, scientists with their own sensors and devices and experts and the History Channel comes up here, not only can we pick up that signal, but it's almost like we can communicate with it. We get interesting chatter inside of it and we triangulate it. And when then we can do ground penetrating radar and all kinds of other experiments. And a lot of that's gonna be coming out in a few months in June. And hopefully uh, whatever they edit out in my contract, I get to show on the behind the scenes. So we've, we've had a lot of really cool stuff happen up here since you guys have not been able to watch. But yeah, happy birthday, JP. What's up? Kirtland said, uh, Colleen says, when you lived by Kirtland Air Force Base, they would vibrate something ultra low and you couldn't sleep. Yes. Is there some kind of a technology underground here? I think there's technology on top, on top of something much more ancient and interesting. Yeah. The fixed array. The phased fixed array. Yes. I'm just trying to see if there's anybody in the mirrors up behind you. Look it around. Let's go up on the balcony. I haven't taken you up there yet. And we've gone 72 minutes now, over an hour. So here, we'll go show you up here. The top view. And then we'll probably wrap up this live. But then also make sure and subscribe and turn on notifications because as soon as I get home, the rest of this research trip is going to start posting as the new season for 2024 behind the scenes up here. The data from the MUPAS device is going to be available through the Mount Wilson Ranch Patreon page as well as ways to come up here and visit us. Stay in the rooms and see for yourself. As also to, you know, access the live data as it happens. So if we have an alert, you'll actually get an alert on your phone if you set it up so you can log in and see. And then we're gonna get, like you said, the night vision or infrared cameras and everything in here. So if the MUPAS device goes off, we can catch like a gamma radiation spike. And then on top of that, see if the camera's turned on. And then if somebody was staying here in one of the rooms, maybe they sensed the, the phenomena or had an encounter. And then we can start to overlap that data, especially when we get the Skywatch cameras and see if something actually flew over the ranch. So if you come up here and visit, you gotta come up here and touch the beak of the eagle because that's for good luck. Rumor is that you'll have a year making good money if you do that. There's the bear hide from the intro. is part of it yep. so yeah people sit at the bar down there and they look in the mirror and they see reflections of people up here and there's no one here that just happened like a week ago that happened a week ago yep. when katie was here or was it katie uh, yep. exactly. katie page exactly. katie page from rocky mountain ranch she was also on uh beyond skinwalker season one Right, season yeah. one. And I season was, two would two. they go back for season two there too? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know. But yeah, Katie Page was here and had that happen to her, sitting at the bar, looking in the mirror, and then seeing somebody else up here sitting or walking around that's not actually here. 
when you sit in here alone, I mean, it's an old wooden building, but I've legit sat down here and it sounds like someone walking up here, like left, right, left, right, like somebody walking through the building or down the hall, like all kinds of cool stuff. Am I scared? No, I don't get that scared. Sometimes I get jump scared, like I'll get startled. But usually these experiences have been really positive for me. They're not always for everyone. Not everybody likes it. Some people get really freaked out and don't want to deal with it. But this is kind of stuff that I'm into. I feel like being afraid kind of just gives it more energy to scare you more. You just scare yourself. To me, it turns into one of those things like, well, like you jump scare yourself like you just saw a snake. And then when you really get close to it, you realize it's just a rope on the ground. It wasn't a snake at all. And a lot of times with the phenomena, even though it ends up really being something, it's not terrifying or scary like your initial prejudices or presuppositions told you. Yeah. To me, that's why I say it's scary when the ghost of like a Native American shaman figure shows up in your bed at night when you're supposed to be just there alone. That isn't like fun to wake up and have a ghost standing in the bedroom, right? But when you understand the journey that you're on and what it's all about, it's more kind of like, hey, get up, let's go, we got stuff to do. <laughs> it's not as terrifying, it's more like part of the quest. Yes. We'll turn it around here and show you guys around a little bit more. Any more questions? Any questions for Jeff before we wrap this up? Did you just feel that cold burst? There was a cold right burst. Who, did that somebody cool. open the door? It was like a cold poof of air just blew through the building. Did Nick knack not come in? I thought she opened the door. I thought I even heard the door open. Did you hear the door open down the hall? I heard the... I, maybe on the camera you can hear it. It sounded like hinges on the door open and then I, I felt a cold woof of air. The back door of the diner is not open? No. Weird. Okay, guys, any more questions? What are we doing? You're new. Go to the playlist setting, uh, playlist tab, and there's a tab there that says Mount Wilson Ranch. And then there's also several seasons. And there's a whole tab there for Beyond Skinwalker Ranch. So we're at a location that was researched for buried UFOs and paranormal activity going clear back before Area 51 here in Nevada at this place called Mount Wilson Ranch. And we're setting up scientific devices and equipment to try and capture the data of it. Beyond just doing ghost stories and walking around trying to tell you what's going on, we're trying to capture the actual proof. So yeah, we're in a saloon, an old Wild West saloon in Pioche, Nevada that's been here since the 1800s, since the days of old wagon trains and the Wild Wild West. There, and before that, there's been Native American groups up here way before that, for thousands of years. There was the Northern Paiute, the Goshen tribe, the Shoshone, the Anasazi, the Fremont people, all the way back into desert archaic people. Native Americans have been here since longer than before the pyramids in Egypt were built. There's petroglyphs here in Nevada that are older than that, right around here. It's pretty cool. Yeah, so we're doing research into what's still really here. Is there still stuff buried underground? And how come in this book, the government was up here researching Clear back in 1996. See, there's the guy that had all the patents, that anti-gravity device. That's him right there. There's Jacques Vallée. And there's the head of the psychic spy program for the Army and the CIA, Dr. Hal Putoff. And he trained and taught and was the teacher of Dr. Jim Sagala, who built that device right there that we're going to turn on tomorrow. So that's what we're doing. That's the big uh, setup. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate you guys and all the comments, all the questions. We had an awesome, huge crowd here tonight. And I'm going to be up here most of the week. If you live anywhere around Nevada, Utah, Arizona,
Go on the Patreon, grab a room, come say hi. We're up here all week. Come donate to the cause. You can help us set it up. Go explore. We're all open source here. Spring is in the air. Spring is in the air and the weather is nice. Okay, we're gonna end the live now. Let me see if I touch the screen. How do I even do it? All right. Yes, yeah, stop the streaming. Peace out, everybody. Thank you, guys. Love you. Thanks for subscribing, turning on notifications. Go check out the Patreon page.